is there for the increasing homelessness because this money is supposed to prevent homelessness because it's supposed to pay for people that can't afford to pay their housing costs. And we see the problem just keep getting worse and worse. And for decades, nobody's done anything about it. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Nobody's doing anything about it. There's no checks and balances. I mean, Trump, I think, is trying desperately. I, I hope to God. I know. I don't. I don't know what he's got to do behind the scenes in order to ameliorate, ameliorate the, 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 the forces working against him. Because I know they are, man. I know he's got powerful, powerful forces fighting him. Just like they hated JFK. I mean, Trump knows about all these secret societies. You remember the crap that JFK said in exposing these people and how the American people find these people repugnant? The skull and bones, all these people that Daddy Bush worked for and Baby Bush, and they, they were sickening people, and, and they've got Obamas into his voodoo and crap like that. And these people, they're sorcerers, man, for all intents and purposes. They're sickies, man. They're on the highway to hell, whether they know it or not. I'm sorry. I'm their best friend warning them. Repent or perish. That's what I got to tell you, man. But there are some evil forces that are steering this ship. I can tell you that with absolute certainty, okay, that have got us in this mess. And the last thing they want is it to change. But they know that sooner or later, they also know they got a bad feeling that things could change at the hand of no less than God Almighty himself, the right time in history, and he's going to demand justice because like a snowball effect, the knowledge is power and it's accumulating within the mass body of humanity that we as a family collective are starting to wake up and realize, hey, the only reason we can't be free is because we bought into this lie from the pit of hell. We can't, why, why we all can't be prosperous. Why we can't, be, because you'll ruin the planet, right? You'll have energy to burn, take vacations and drive your car and maybe buy a private jet and go around the world at will. Think of how your carbon footprint now, you'd be ruining the planet. That's what they'll tell you while they're doing that. They don't want you to do it. And then we're not even going to talk about disruptive clean technology. Oh, well, we can't have that. I mean, what would PG&E do if, if all of a sudden uh, people own their own energy? If we had zero point, you know, generators, everybody could put in their house and have unlimited amounts of energy just taken right out of the air like Tesla was saying we could have a long, long time ago. Okay? No. Or we're not going to talk solar highways and instead of us paying tolls, you know, they send you. I'm waiting for, you know, a fee to come in the mail. I was down in Pacifica this last uh, Monday. I went down there to see a daughter. She moved from San Francisco to Pacifica. But I crossed the Golden Gate Bridge going south, and I'm going to get uh, $8. It keeps inflating, even though they got rid of the toll takers. They're not even – these people, I don't know how they're getting paid. Who's getting, they keep raising the price, keep debasing your toll bridge. So instead of them sending uh, – you having to send them 850 or whatever it's going to be in the mail that i got to waiting for the ticket – you know, that's the way it works. It's just automated. They take a picture of your license, and then they send you that and tell you to pay up or, you know, it's going to double or triple or whatever the hell. But they'll be sending you money every time you cross. You understand how stupid the money will be. will render it irrelevant. They all know that would have happened naturally. JFK was going to prove that with sound economic policies. That's what it was all about with the silver notes and silver certificates that he was already circulating. A lot of people don't know that. That's recent history. you got to know that. He was actively abolishing the Federal Reserve Bank. Executive Order 11,110. He, we don't need these useless pustules. Worse than pustules. That we're swimming in their pus. Okay? And Trump knows. He knows all this stuff. And, and, you know, and the reason I back Trump is because he's the only president. Obama didn't say that he was ashamed of homelessness in America. Baby Bush didn't say that. He was ashamed of homelessness in America. Clinton didn't say he was ashamed of homelessness in America. Daddy Bush didn't say he was ashamed of homelessness in America. Ronald Reagan didn't say he was ashamed of homelessness in America as he dumped the mental institutions to save a few bucks. Nice move. Remember, the homeless, the desperately poor, are not criminals. If they were, they'd be in jail, safely ensconced behind bars with three hots and a cot on your dime for being rapists and murderers. Okay? They're not criminals. But this is, but the way the culture is now, they're being induced into crime, okay, to do some heinous crime, because the jails are overflowing. They have to let the low-level offenders out, and so you got to, if you want those three hots and cots, you got to work for it. You got to commit some really heinous act, rape, maybe, a, you know, home invasion, a murder, uh, you know, you name it, something very serious, some really, you know, some hardcore felony, right? 
That's America today in the 21st century. Has that progress? Let's talk about defining words. Progress. Then to define progress, my God, we are in so much trouble, my friends. We are in so much trouble. So some of the other jobs that absolutely depend, that absolutely depend upon desperate poverty being maintained, of these good, decent social workers, you know, just like the volunteers, a lot of these people have the same mentality. They're goody two-shoes and, you know, well-wishers and goody do-gooders, right? This, in this, I, I, hey, I think being a social welfare worker would be great. I've thought about doing it myself. But then I, I see, hey, everything's a part of the problem. Just like I thought, you know, getting into developing affordable housing would be good. Then I feel, I see all the resistance, all the people that are against it. And they're not left or right. They're not Democrat, Republican. They're not liberal or conservative. They're just people that have an interest in keeping housing prices high. Do you understand? It's a special interest group. And you got these collusive groups. So me, I wanted to develop affordable, truly affordable housing. And I see, oh my God, I'm going to be faced with these freaking mountains that are going to be put up in my way every time I turn around and the political uh, consternation I'm going to face at City Hall and people fighting me and blaming, hey, this ecology and the green belt and ah, blah, 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 traffic and blah, 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 not in my backyard, the NIMBYs out there and all this crap. But look, that's what these people face. And the, the volunteers out there, they, they face, you know, the same kind of stuff. I mean, we're in a lot of trouble. People got to understand that we're in it deep, folks. So the social workers, now this social welfare industrial complex, these people without desperate poverty, poor people, these people would be out of a job. Do you understand? Do you understand? The dubious warfare industry, that's what, that, that goes back probably most anciently. They've been taking advantage of the downtrodden to be easily in, conscripted and enlisted into the military. This goes way back in history. But they play on that. Sure, the valor and all that, you know, that's the part people, men have that, that, you know, a lot of guys, you know, if I could play just a shoot 'em up game and just, you know, as a gladiatorial, gladiatorial sport, you know, I could do that. You know, I, you know I'm going to go shoot, you know, I'm tougher shooter than you and I got better guns and I'm, I'm more skilled. So, you know, they go play this gladiatorial game of shoot 'em up. I mean, it's kind of comparable to something they would have played in the past, but with weird swords and shields and horses, the knights and all that crap that they used to get into. It's similar to that by extension, right? So, you know, this dubious war hasn't been that hard from the start. And it does, it appeals to people, get, hey, you get conscripted. It's about money. I'm going to pay you to do this. So they're the earliest mercenaries. And that's, current, that's how they get these guys in there. And good, decent men and women. And now we got 20 of these guys a day taking their own lives. And we're scratching our heads. And, whoa, why could this be? I mean, what the hell are these people? What kind of nightmares have they faced? What kind of nightmares are we allowing them to be put through? What's going on here? Thank God Trump is pulling troops out of Syria. God, we're in so much trouble, man. God, we are in so much trouble. I just, I can't not exclaim that enough, okay, and try to convey that to people so that they understand, yes, it's serious, man. God is terribly pissed off. We've got to see through his eyes and get it across to other people. Get ready, man, because the wrath of the Lord is coming. His cup is overfilling with the fury of his righteous indignation, and it's going to be poured out upon our land. All these people professing Christianity, and he can't stand them. He's going to puke them out. So what it says, you, you're lukewarm. I don't know you. Away from me, you evildoers. You look down on the downtrodden. You look down on Jesus Christ and you're in church on Sunday and calling yourself a Christian and besmirching my name, defaming my name, maligning my reputation, calling yourselves Christians. How dare you? Get away from me, he's going to say. Bleh. He's going to puke you out like Revelation says, you know. So we're in a lot of trouble, my friends, and I'm just trying to, you know, convince you to, hey, jump ship, man, the sooner the better, and then convince other people to jump ship. Get ready. Get ready, man. I'm telling you, the countdown is here. The, the, the final grains in the hourglass of this age are running out. It's just like it's written in Scripture. The end of one age is coming. The beginning of a new age is coming. Whether the return of Christ is a metaphor or otherwise, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be realized in a very tangible way on earth when the new age that God is implementing is implemented and re realized when, when his will is established and uh, on earth. I mean, that's it. It's going to be a 
perfect world. And there's not going to be a-holes running our lives anymore. That's a world I can sign up for and live for an eternity. If I'm free, absolutely free, man, I'm down with it. Gone with death and diseases and all the negative t things, all the temperature extremes and natural disasters, anything that can harm or kill you is gone. You've got such a more uh, atomically superior body that you can't die. I mean, that's what I want, man. And you get to keep all your senses, including your sense of touch. I mean, that that's that's the body I want. That's the realm I want to be in. That's the paradise I'm shooting for, man. And I want you to, too. And it's just an ideal place. But, uh, you know, we've really got to understand how much trouble we're in at the hands of these people and how they're going to fight tooth and nail. They're going to pull out all the stops to keep the worm from turning, to keep the ship from turning, to make us believe that we haven't hit a wall, that we can keep going down this path of death and destruction, stay on this trajectory toward hell and a fourth world status in America. We can just keep doing it. Just, you know, just beat your head against the wall on the one billionth and tenth time. Then we'll, we'll, we'll achieve it. We'll accomplish it. We're just playing volleyball. Chuck Schumer in there. Oh, no, I'm just a righteous dude. I don't know. He's got no idea. He's nothing tangible. There's nothing of substance coming out of that guy's mouth. He's a nobody. I'd like to slap him silly. I'd love to take him into a ring with the other people aforementioned. Love to. Love to. Love to. We're around the same generation. He might be have a couple of years on me, but if he's been working out, he should be a tough guy. It looks like he's in shape. Let's go, Chucky. But, you know, you're a nobody. As far as, you know, you, you remind me of guys I knew to, in school. that You know, you're always the one that thought he was so smart and had to show off to the teacher, but you were just a dumbass. You know what I mean? And that the really smart kid just looked at you and thought, God, I'm going to have to go through life with clowns like this? That, that, that are running the show, getting all the attention, getting the mainstream media coverage, idiots, clowns, and acting like they're, they're all self-righteous, like, oh, no, I, uh, I'm i really incensed about that. I'm, this, that, oh, I'm, I'm the judge, I'm the, I'm the pontiff here of the political pontiff, uh, I, I'm the, uh, you know, I'm the intellect of, of intellects here in the halls of Congress and the Senate and all this crap. You're an idiot, man. Why don't you get on your knees and say, God, shape me into the man you want me to be okay let me believe politically the way you want me to believe okay let me help donald trump to end homelessness why aren't you talking about that chucky schumer why aren't you saying how you're ashamed of homelessness in this country and what the hell are we doing bringing one more immigrant into this country until we first take care of our own native sons and daughters where are you chucky schumer where are you when it comes to transmitting images of tent cities in Los Angeles around the world to these third world countries where people are, they're scrambling to come from, okay? Why aren't you transmitting, talking about that, that we need to do that to show these people how we treat our own native sons and daughters, our own citizenry, our own weak links in society, our own downtrodden. Transmit those images. Do you think they'd be clamoring into this country? Do I hear Chuck Schumer talking about that? No, you do what Trump tells you to do, you little idiot. I'm sorry. I, you know what? I let the dog off the leash, and I apologize. Because God loves Chuck Schumer just as much as he loves me. And so that's a heartfelt apology. And I've been told that, you know what? The best thing in life is just to admit it as soon as you can. So I'll make an immediate amends. I'm sorry, Chuck. But I, you know what? I mean, you're my brother. But, yet, you know, I'm just... I'm repelled by your your lack of, uh, of 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 reality. You're just I don't know what it is about you that makes me nuts, man. But you're making me nuts, okay? I just it's something that really bugs me about your demeanor. Do you really want to fix problems? No, you're like one of those that no. My my job is to make sure that we have a perpetual uh, fiasco, a, a perpetual a perpetual debacle here. And that we stay on this trajectory to death and destruction in America. That we establish a fourth world status and we get a totalitarian state, the worst kind of fascist communism in here, authoritarian, just while I'm at the top. And I get to tell everybody what to do, even though I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. I got nothing good to offer you. I'm not giving you solutions. I don't want solutions. Can't you figure that out? I mean, I read between your lines, man. There's no substance, man. So do something, man. Say something that makes me have some faith in you, that you're for real, that you really are a human being that cares about his conscience and answering to the, your owner that gave you your brain, bro. 
God Almighty, I mean, we've got to all humble ourselves before the Lord and just have some substance, okay? Be somebody, have some oil in your lamp, for God's sake. Taken from the analogy of the ten virgins having to wait for the bridegroom. I mean, if you're a righteous dude, Chuck Schumer, show it, man. What are your causes? What do you stand for? What do you want for the American people? Do you want prosperity? Are you working for the New World Order cabal, this globalist cabal that says no, no, we've got to impoverish the people so that they don't ruin the planet. I think that's where you're coming from, man. That you're just okay. And so many of these Democrats are okay with impoverishing people. And then they come out and under this pretense that they are, these are the egalitarian ones with their socialist principles. They're going to fix things when it's falling on the backs of the poor. It's socialism for the poor where they've got to pay the price. It's Robin Hood 